You know, when you go to pick your very first gun, it can be very confusing and not very inviting either. So today I'm here to help you and give you some information so you can walk into your local gun shop or whatever and make an informed decision on the best gun for your first gun and ones to stay away from. This is the 2022 edition. Now I've covered this same subject in the past using pretty much just pistols because I think that is a great first gun. At least some are and some aren't. But in this video, I'm gonna cover way more than that. We're gonna cover pistols, carry guns, PCCs, rifle shotguns, et cetera, et cetera. There's gonna be a lot of information here to help you. Now it is very possible that you've already gone into a gun shop. Maybe it went something like this. Hey man, how you doing? Yep, cool. Um, well, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking for my first gun, man. Never really done this before. Yeah, you and the other 25 people in here. Yeah, yeah I, I see y'all are pretty busy. Um, can I get some recommendations from you, man? I don't know anything about this. Well, gladly, let me show you around. We got your commie guns here. Got your space age crap right here. I kind of like that space age one. We got your Glocks and your Glock wannabes right there. We got your AR-15s, some damn thing they call a bullpup. And then we got some shotgun they imported from Turkey or some damn place. And then we got your Charles Daly. Which one do you want? Man, there's so much here I don't really know. Uh, what do you recommend? Well, yeah, I can give you my recommendation for sure. Now, just to let you know, you need three guns. That's it. AR-15s and all that commie crap, you don't need it. Don't touch it. What you need is a Glock 19. Always gonna run in 15 rounds of fun. Smith & Wesson, no? What'd you hear me say, boy? Glock, Glock only. Okay, Glock only. Now, if you don't want to run a semi-automatic, what you could run is a revolver. Now, if you want to protect your fam, you use a gun that never jams, and that's what this is right here, Dirty Harry Special. Now, once we get past that, 22 for squirrel popping. This little heritage right here, she is a beauty. I don't even hunt squirrels. Now, I like the brown shot. Get your hands off the F-12 Turkish Typhoon, whatever the hell that thing is. And if you want a shotgun, this here is a Charles Daly. And that's all you need. So which one do you want? Now, I, I was just kind of looking around, man, just trying to get an idea. But thanks, man. <laughs> Appreciate it. Maybe that was a little exaggerated. Maybe it wasn't. But at the same time, you want to make sure that you have some information. You don't go to buy a car and have zero information about it. You at least know something about it, or at least I hope you do. We all have the access to the entire world right here in our pockets. So, you know, the, the, the idea is to get some information, get some knowledge, so you know that whoever is standing behind that counter is giving you information that you can actually use and that they're giving you good information because not everybody that stands behind that counter always has your best intentions in mind. And honestly, not everybody that stands behind that counter has a ton of knowledge anyways. It may be super limited no matter how good they play it off. This is something I actually learned very early on when I first started going into gun shops. I thought, man, these guys know a lot. And then I started to learn more and more and more and realize, wow, these guys are really full of crap. Now, there's a few things that these guns, if it's gonna be your best gun for your first one, it has to have all of these things. First, it's gotta be easy to learn to shoot. You don't wanna start with the biggest and baddest caliber. You definitely don't wanna to try to teach somebody else in your family how to shoot this because they're gonna hate it instantly. We've all seen those videos where a guy hands this little small girl a 500 Smith & Wesson and they start laughing and blah, 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 blah. It's moronic you know, to say the least. And so you want something that is good, not only for you to learn on, but something you could possibly teach others in your family. If you have a hesitant uh, spouse, wife, whatever, and they're like, I don't really know about this, keep them in the back of your head too, because then you could maybe take them to the range with you, get them introduced to it, try to, try to introduce some fun into it so they're like super excited about this whole thing with you. 
something you could possibly teach your children on and, and teach them the safe way of handling firearms, super important. We need something where the ammo is cheap and available. And this kind of speaks for itself. You're going to be practicing a lot. And so with that being said, you want to make sure that it's a, a caliber that you can easily get and is not going to break the bank too much. Another thing that goes without being said, but I'll say it anyways, because it's super important. The gun has to be reliable. No matter if you have a hundred guns or this is your only gun, that one gun that you're going to have to depend on to possibly save your life better be reliable. Fortunately, most modern guns are reliable. There, there are some bad eggs out there that I've covered in the past as well, but generally speaking, pretty much everything here has been reliable, but I will touch on a few that, that have not been so reliable as well. And it has to be a caliber that's going to save your life. Now, all the, all the things I just gave you that the gun has to be, I mean, a BB gun is all that. It's relatively cheap, pretty easy to shoot pretty reliable actually, but it's not going to be your go-to if something goes bump in the night. So it has to be in a caliber that is proven to work in a self-defense situation. I know the intro was a little bit long, but I just wanted to set the stage for how I'm approaching this video. Let's go ahead and cover the micro guns, the micro 380s pocket guns, all of these, the, the micro nines even. Uh, so this is an LCP Max. I've covered this gun quite a bit and it is a fantastic pocket gun. This is Mrs. Heckshot's uh, everyday carry. For the most part, she can conceal it really well and all of that good stuff. But these guns suck as your first gun. This is not something, this is a DB9 Gen 4. This is not something you wanna try to teach somebody on as their very first gun. These things suck, man, because they have a lot of recoil. And it's funny because a lot of people, you know, when they're shopping for their wives and stuff, they're like, oh, that small gun, it's just so perfect. Not knowing that it's really the worst option for most people that are inexperienced with firearms. I say most, I, I'd probably venture to say all new shooters, this is not what you want. This is not what you want. Any small gun like this, it's going to be hard to shoot and you're not going to enjoy it. And that kind of defeats the purpose of the first thing we said. It needs to be something that you can easily learn on and something you want to shoot. These things are terrible. 380, nine millimeter, all of them are proven calibers, right? And you can get the ammo, but at the same time, it's not something you want to learn on. Terrible first gun that includes the 938 and some others. Now, if you are set on the idea, hey man, I do want to carry this gun. I also want to learn on it. You know, and all of the criteria we set, I will give you some good options. Now, just a few years ago, things like the PPSM-2, the original Shield, they were seven and eight round guns. Pretty good. Glock 43s and Glock 42s, which is a 380. Those kind of guns were pretty good, but now things have changed. So what you want to look for generally is something like the Shield Plus, the Shield Plus Performance Center. And what's great about these guns is they shoot way better than what they should. They have amazing triggers in them. I've done so much on the Shield Plus that I'm not gonna talk about it too much in this video, but I'll tell you is because of the way the gun shoots. They have amazing triggers in them. You have the ability to add optics, which is really good too for low light. And you know, if you wanna train on something like this, perfect. And a lot of times people have an easier time using a red dot than they do irons. So this is a great, this can be a really great option. The magazines are designed so that you have a flat base plate and you have an extended base plate. So that extended base plate gives you enough room where your hand and while you're shooting, you can feel really confident in that purchase. And really whenever you're shooting this gun, you're like, man, this thing, it shoots like a larger gun. Even if you don't know what a larger gun shoots like, you may be impressed with the results that you actually get out of something like this. This is my number one recommendation for anybody that is looking for a concealed carry gun in 2022 and the foreseeable future because they shoot incredibly well and offer a lot of the features that the big guns offer as well. You want to keep in mind if you're using this as a home defense gun as well, it's not so easy to hook up a lighter laser to this. There are options out there, but because it doesn't have a rail, you'll have to figure out some, some other options out there. But there are some, some out there or keep a separate flashlight so you can see what you're looking at in the middle of the night. 
Shield Plus is a fantastic option, but it's not the only option. Smith & Wesson has the equalizer. This will fix your issue with the rail. It also uses the same mags as the Shield Plus, and they give you the 15 round mag. So that's gonna make it even better to shoot at the range, optics ready. This is a fantastic gun, surprisingly amazing shooting gun. Just did a review on this not too long ago, and it meets a good amount of that criteria, especially if you want a carry gun. The Sig Macro is another good one. It's a bigger carry gun, but that's the idea. I don't wanna give you something so small that you're like, dude, this thing is just really hard to shoot. So sometimes as opposed to going to really deep concealed carry guns, um, some of these other ones will actually serve you really well, but also give you enough gun to really teach somebody on. You don't want something so small that it just, they're so hard, they're harder to shoot. Generally speaking, they're harder to shoot. I don't wanna lead you down that road. I want you something that you can learn on the right way. Now, one thing I do wanna to touch on is the caliber you choose. 380 is like your minimum threshold, minimum. Anything under that, you don't even wanna mess with for self-defense, okay? But you also don't wanna go with something that is so expensive or even kind of obscure where you can't get enough of the ammo to actually practice. So this 30 Super Carry from Smith & Wesson, made specifically for the concealed carry market. And I think, I hope that it will, and I think that it will catch on eventually once more and more people start to make it. There are some other companies starting to make the ammo for this, which is good. And they people see the benefits of it, but at the same time, that ammo is still expensive. 357 SIG, 45 gap, any kind of obscure or not readily available caliber, especially like 45 gap. Now you can find 30 super carry, at least I've been seeing it uh, at local places around me. Um, you know, of course, 40 Smith & Wesson, 45 ACP. Me, I like nine millimeter and 45 ACP in my handguns. 40, I, I, I'm not a fan of that round at all, but that is a self-defense option you can go with if you choose to do so. Nine or 45 is the way that I like to go. We're dwindling the pistols down a little bit. What I have left here, full-size options. Now, if you wanna go with a full-size handgun, these things are great fantastic for teaching somebody, teaching yourself how to shoot on them. The caliber thing still is in play here, right? But you have a bigger gun. It's going to suck up more recoil. It's going to be easier to shoot. It's going to be easier to learn on. It's going to be easier to teach somebody else, especially somebody that's timid. These are really kind of the cream of the crop. If you want to go with a pistol, this is the way to go. Again, I'm going to cover some other options, rifles, PCCs, and stuff like that here in a second. But my recommendations, if you want a Glock, a lot of people want a Glock, they're great guns, they're pretty much gonna run 100% of the time, although they do malfunction, they are very reliable. Glock 19 is the way to go if you want to go with a Glock. You can do a lot with these if you want. You can keep it very simple like I've done here. I haven't changed a thing on this gun and I shoot this gun very well. The magazines are cheap go with OEM magazines. Whoever the manufacturer, like Glock, go with those mags. No aftermarket magazines. I don't like them, I don't trust them. If you want something more on the carry side of it, but has mag compatibility with that 19 or 17, Glock 26. Way shorter grip, a little bit harder to shoot, but again, for concealed carry, this is a fantastic option if you wanna go with a Glock. One of my favorite guns on the planet and, and series of guns is the M&P from Smith & Wesson. This is the new metal series. I would go with the M2.0 or up. So this is also an M2.0. The triggers are much better and they've done a lot of great things to improve this over the first gen. Now, if you find a first gen at a screaming deal, then you can always upgrade you know, things like the trigger and all that kind of stuff. But M2.0 and up is the way to go. And I say up because they have changed the trigger kind of middle of the series, maybe towards the end of this life of the M2.0 series. I, I'm not really sure where they're following uh, in that timeline there, if they're going to a M3.0 or whatever, but at the same time, they've put a flat face trigger on here and it's made such a huge difference in this gun. The M&P metal is a great option. 
This is the 10 millimeter. Now this again is going to fall on that kind of expensive side of the ammo stuff. Now I love 10 millimeter. It is a fantastic hard hitting round. I really enjoy this round, but probably not the best option to go with nine millimeter or 45 in these as well is the way I would typically go. You know, Springfield Armory. I've really started to warm up to Springfield guns. This is the XDM Elite. Wouldn't say they're my favorite, but they do make some really nice options. Canik SFX Rival. This is a great shooting uh, full-size gun. This, now this is a whole nother level, and this is kind of excessive, I would say, for a first gun. It really just depends on your budget, man. You may have all kinds of money and I may not be telling you nothing, but the P320 Spectra Comp is one of those guns. If you want to look like a star on the range, this gun right here is hard to beat, but it's super expensive. So, you know, it, it just really depends on your budget and where you're at. Everybody's different there. FN also makes a great um, full-size gun. Now, I don't prefer this. If, if I were to choose one of these guns as like, hey man, what do I really want to teach somebody on? Or, you know, what would I want to learn on? This wouldn't be it. And the only reason is because of that trigger, man. That trigger, I wish they would have updated it for this series. They didn't. It's a good gun. Just, man, the trigger is just lacking. Regardless, man, any of these brands I just mentioned and some I haven't mentioned are, are really, really good. Maybe a good idea is to take your significant other, take your spouse with you, let her kind of get her hands on them too and, 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 and see it and maybe get her involved. And she might even get really excited about this. Now, don't be surprised if she says, oh, this one's really pretty and this one's, that's where you have the information to know, okay, yeah, it's pretty, but it's too small, babe. You know, it's, it's, you're, you're not gonna want to, to really shoot that. They really suck to shoot. So that's your cross the bear, not mine. I've done it before. I still do it to this day. So good luck. But regardless, semi-autos are a great way to start. Some people will swear that the revolver is the only way you should go. Like our gun salesman we just met a little while ago. Now, yes, there is a, a less chance of this jamming, but you also, in modern guns, you don't have a ton to worry about. Typically, it's going to be like a magazine or ammo issue or something like that. But you have to kind of train and prepare for those things because they will happen. They can happen with a revolver. But regardless, you can shoot them extremely well. They got typically, you know, a good amount of weight. There's some lightweight ones out there. But, you know, the sights are, are not is good as a semi-auto. I just prefer, if it were me, to start with a semi-auto. This is something, you know, kind of add to the collection and, you know, shoot and go have fun and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not saying that this isn't a real self-defense option. I'm not saying that at all because in bear country and, and, and all that kind of stuff, a revolver, man, that's a great option. Not something that I would start out on. What about 22, man? You may hear this all the time, and this is a great training tool, but when it comes to self-defense, 22 is not it. That's not what you want. This isn't the best first gun to buy for your first one. Okay, it's cheap, it's inexpensive. I think I paid 169 bucks for this Heritage, right? But it's not going to be a sufficient caliber, 22 long rifle for self-defense. It's just not. It's not even close. Yes, 22 can kill you, um, but for self-defense, this is not acceptable. Great training tool and maybe something you want to buy to teach somebody on and then move up to a 9 or 45 or whatever. But generally, man, if you teach somebody the right way, they can take this 9mm and they can start on this and they can learn and, and, and get into it fairly quickly so you know but as far as pistols smith and wesson glock sig springfield armory canic fn all of them are pretty decent guns man i've done a review on pretty much everything on this table so if you want some more information you can always check those out but this is a great place to start if you want something for personal protection home defense 
not really concealed carry. Uh, these are a little bit too too big and bulky for for a lot of people. Not everybody, but a lot of people. But it is a good place to start for a first gun. But there's some other pistols that I want to show you here that may be a good option for you as well. I'm not going to make you watch me do this. Let's uh, pistol caliber carbines. These are one of my favorite sections of firearms because they're easy to shoot, they're easy to learn on, and a lot of them are reliable and can be reliable. So where the limitations are gonna fall here is obviously in personal protection as far as conceal carry. Sorry, you can't conceal carry these like that. It's just, it's, it's, it's not really possible. It's not something you really probably want to do, but if you're not concerned with concealed carry right now, then it's something that you could keep in a vehicle. It's something you could definitely use for home protection. It's going to be easier to teach somebody to shoot one of these in the same pistol calibers than it will be an actual pistol. Now you wanna teach somebody to shoot with a pistol. You definitely want to do that, but these offer a heavier gun, obviously, you know, some being rifles, some are actually pistols, but they give you some of the workings, kind of like a rifle, even though it's a pistol. They're, they're really unique, man, but they really can serve an important purpose in your journey or collection or however you want to look at them. But as a defensive tool, and that's what we're really looking at, these can be a fantastic option. The MPX Copperhead was my, I want to say this is my first one, maybe my second one, uh, maybe the Strybog was the first PCC I ever bought, but overall short profile. This is a pistol brace. Okay. This is not a stock. It may look like a stock if you don't know any better, but it is actually a brace and it has AR 15 style controls. So you have a magazine release right here. You have a fire selector here, which is your safety, obviously magazine release. Boom, right? You have a overall short barrel. Overall length is fairly short as well. And if you want to teach somebody how to shoot on this compared to a regular pistol, if they're super timid, you put this in their hand, you know, they have a bigger pistol that's going to help soak up that recoil. You can teach them to kind of get used to it. And honestly, something that could seriously change your life. Now, one of the space age guns that are, that our gun shop dealer was talking about, like the Chris Vector here, this is wildly different from pretty much anything out there because of the recoil reduction system that is in it. Again, a pistol brace right here. And this one's heavy, dude. This one is actually probably the heaviest one I have because of the kind of system that's in here. But again, the heavier the gun generally, the less recoil that you're gonna feel. This one's in 45, by the way. You want an AK pattern pistol. All right, this is the KP9. So essentially, it works just like an AK would, right? So charging handle over here. Again, you have, you know, standard detachable magazines like that and a pistol brace. Okay, so this can be a great option, especially with some kind of a sling so you can really stabilize that. But this would be a great option. One thing you wanna keep in mind with pistols you can't just go adding any attachment that you want to. Now we can save that for another uh, video, but essentially, right, without the proper tax stamp, <laughs> if I were to add a stock to this gun, just add a stock, you're talking about a felony in that case. If I added a Ford grip to this gun, felony. Learn your laws as silly as they may be, and they are, you gotta learn them. <laughs> because you could really screw yourself. This is a pistol, pistol, pistol rifle. If you don't want to worry with, with, with all of the legalities of this, but you want a pistol caliber carbine, this is a great option. This one's actually brand new to the market. This is a St. Victor. It has an actual stock on it. You can add a forward grip. You can add pretty much whatever you want to to this gun legally. It's chambered in nine millimeter. One thing they decided to do was go with a proprietary mag. I'm not sure why, but other than that, so far, I've been having a great time with this gun. It's got a flat face trigger. Really, really pretty incredible uh, 
gun to be quite honest with you i've actually been running this uh this ronin p12 on there testing them out i did a video on that thing it takes a ton of abuse and it's still running but this is a good option too if you want a rifle and you want to teach somebody on it these things can be so much fun very practical and can definitely help save your life and you can teach people on them at the same time and they're much easier to control the recoil now let's get some other guns in here. So I'm gonna split the rifles up between 5.56 and 7.62 and then go to 308 and some other calibers. 5.56 guns, we have an AR-15, we have a Hellion rifle. This is a bullpup design for our 7.62s. We have an AK variant and then we have an SKS. So starting with the Hellion, the bullpup rifle offers distinct advantages. And and, and if you're looking at your first gun and you're trying to decide, man, do I want a rifle? Do I want a PCC? What do I really want? One thing to know is that this will allow you to extend out to distances that a PCC could only dream of. So if you are limited on your range space, 50 yards, PCC might be the way to go for now. If you can at least get 100 yards, a rifle is a fantastic option. That's where you want to go. That's where you kind of want to up from a PCC to a rifle, okay? And so these are not that much harder to shoot. 5.56 five, is soft recoiling. You can add a lot to it, but the bullpup specifically, you'll notice its overall short design allows you to have a 16 inch barrel. It's got to have a minimum of a 16 inch barrel to be a rifle and still retain that velocity because your action is now in the back as opposed to the action being in the front like an AR that I'll show you here in a, in a minute. So you have a compact design. You don't have to go through an SBR or anything like that. This one, the, the controls on this rifle are wildly different uh, than, than most other guns that I've ever used, including like the X95, which is more like a traditional AR as far as the controls. But generally on a bullpup, your magazine, it's, it's always gonna be back here. Action's gonna be back here. One of the downfalls of these rifles is the weight. It's, it's going to be a heavier gun because of the action and the way that it works. It's just, it's just the way it is, right? But you still get a butt pad. You still get a cheek riser on this one. The way you charge the gun, it's got a little folder right in here. So you pull that back and if there was rounds in here, it would actually charge up. So very unique in its design. And if you're somebody that you're like, man, I just don't want an AR. Everybody has an AR. That's kind of how I was too. Um, so a bullpup is a great way to go. The Hellion and the X95 are the only two I have experience with and both of which have been amazing. The X95, probably my, my best example of that, which I don't have on the table, but I've done stuff with it. If you want to go with a rifle, the AR-15 is gonna offer you a lot. So you'll notice that overall, it's a lot longer, but this rifle is actually lighter than the one I just showed you. So the benefit of this is, again, you have a soft recoiling gun, easy to shoot, lighter rifle. You can add a lot of attachments here or whatever you want. I'd say keep it at a very minimum. Try to keep your rifle as light as possible. That's just what I try to do. But you have a gun that is super familiar and very easy to get any and everything that you want for it. Super easy to shoot, very easy to train somebody to use this gun and get them used to shooting a rifle. The practicality of the 5.56, 500 yards, I would say, good day, perfect conditions, great shooter, great ammo, that kind of thing. But if you need something to extend out, and 5.56 is so cheap. I mean, it is, it is, a, it is a readily available, low recoiling, easy to shoot, fantastic gun and round. Just depends on what kind of system you wanna go with. These are just two of the many examples out there, okay? This is not a comprehensive list at every 5.56 rifle. There's a lot out there. Uh, but truck gun, again, is something you could do. Um, Bullpups are great for that as well because they're overall short length, but you can do it with ARs as well. So there's that. The other popular, caliber you're going to see 762 by 39 AK platform. I mean, uh, there's so many manufacturers that make AKs now. It's crazy. Um, but it is an awesome round. 
The 556 moves faster, but the 762 is just, it's satisfying. It's something you could protect your home with for sure. And having that in an AK platform. Now with the AK generally, it's gonna be a little bit tougher to mount optics. Although a lot of them now come with this little side rail. So you can then mount the optic over the dust cover here. But aside from that, it, these things are just really fantastic. This SKS, probably not as great of an option to start out with, a little bit more limited. This one is from what, 1950, 1950. So absolutely love this thing, has the bayonet, all that kind of stuff on there. But it's, a, it's an older design that hasn't been able to keep up with the times as well as the AK. But rifles are a great place to start if you're not concerned with concealed carry right now, but you have a range where you can get out to at least 100 yards and you wanna extend things out and you wanna work on long range shooting and you wanna protect your home with, rifle is a great place to start. Let's get some other calibers in here to show you. The three calibers in rifles that I recommend, 5.56, 7.62 by 39, or one or the other, or both, preferably, 308. 5.56, 7.62, really great. 300, maybe 400 yards. 308, well past that. So let's say you're somebody that, you know, you have a huge range and you really want something that can extend out, 308 is fantastic because it's not as expensive as some of the other calibers like 338 Lapua, which, which is a fantastic round, don't get me wrong, but it still is relatively affordable. It's a hard hitting round and it's something you can find pretty much everywhere. So 308, if you wanna do long distance shooting, 308 is generally going to be a little bit heavier too. You have you do have exceptions to that rule. This is the Ruger SFAR, and basically they designed a rifle that is about the size of a standard AR, but chambered in 308. So they kind of fixed that issue of having a super heavy 308 rifle. And this thing, man, honestly, dude, I didn't do it any justification when I when I've I've taken it out. I think twice now. And uh, I was so dissatisfied with my personal shooting that I've decided to hold the, the full review off until I can get back out there with this thing and, and really show what this thing's capable of. But same AR style controls, a little bit bigger mag, of course, a little bit different bolt, obviously a different barrel, but you have that familiarity in an AR platform in a 308 rifle. This is a great way to go. One that's not so great to go, and the only reason I say that is the SCAR. This is probably my favorite rifle of all time, but it's so expensive. I mean, if, again, depending on what your budget is, you may have enough money to buy this, buy a thousand rounds and be able to go, you know, shoot with an optic. But when you buy a rifle, that's another expense. You have to buy some kind of an optic or red dot. You don't want to put something like this <laughs> on the SCAR. It, it's silly. It's, it's ridiculous. So you're gonna have to invest in a piece of glass whenever you buy a rifle, that's an extra expense. There's things that I haven't done to these two that I still need to do. I still need to put a sling on this gun. Um, and this one's pretty much done, but this is a 10 and a half pound rifle as it sits, as it sits. So everything you add to it is going to add weight. Now, fortunately, because this rifle I dedicated to a prone and to a bench rest rifle, I'm okay with that, but you know, the heavier they are, you gotta, you gotta kind of think about that as well, depending on what you're doing, of course. 308, if you wanna do long distance, that's the way to go. It's gonna be more expensive for the ammo and you may be shooting less of it because of that, but if you want to go with something like this, 308 is my go-to. Obscure calibers. This is the 30 carbine. This is a World War II M1 carbine you're talking about one of the softest shooting, enjoyable guns. I've taken this thing out to 200 yards with iron sights and it is just a tack driver. But the 30 carbine, yes, it could save your life for sure. Uh, there's, there's various accounts of the 30 carbine in the war not being effective. Some people say it was effective, but regardless, 
it could save your life, but the ammo is so expensive, dude. You're talking about a dollar a round, uh, sometimes a little bit more for that. And it's, it's expensive. So every time you pull the trigger, there's a Washington, there's a Washington, there's a Washington. Super expensive. Don't recommend going obscure calibers at all, even in something like this. What about this? Probably my second favorite rifle that I own. This is the K98K, 1941. All the German markings from that period are on this rifle, and I absolutely love this thing. It's a bolt action. So let's say this was a modern gun, modern bolt action in 308. I would say it's still not a great option because that self-defense situation, yes, you can protect yourself with it, but that's assuming that you are, you know, trying to stop somebody at, you know, two and 300 yards. This is, this is too much to use inside of your home. A bolt action is not the best gun to go with for your first gun for protection. Remember, we're talking about personal protection. This is an eight millimeter Mauser, even worse inside of a home or something like that. This is a fantastic gun, but not for that purpose. The ammo is stupid expensive too. You are better served with a semi-auto at that point. In, in this order, if I were to rank them, 5.56, five, 7.62 are pretty much neck and neck for me. I love both those rounds, then a 308. And then later on down the line, man, if you want something like this, dude, I'm all for it. I am all for it, but not the best gun for your first gun. One more section of guns. Without further ado, let's go ahead and end the video out with shotguns. All right, so shotguns can be a good first gun. Not the best. I saved them for last for a reason because they do limit you, especially on range. So if you want something for home defense strictly, <laughs> Strictly home defense, shotgun will be a fantastic, one of the best home defense guns, if not the best, in a 12 gauge shotgun. But if you wanna do any kind of range shooting, at, at distance at least, not a great option. If you wanna shoot clays and all that kind of stuff, which is a ton of fun, well, shotgun's the way to go. But again, very limited on distance range shooting. So anything at distance, you're going to be limited. Uh, and again, even like a range like I go to, like there's no steel targets for shotguns. I can't even throw clays and stuff out there. So that kind of sucks. So it makes shotgun shooting a little bit for me personally kind of boring. But if you have your own land or you have somewhere you can go, a club or something that lets you do those things, well, this is a good option. And again, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm talking about some of the, the, the more fun aspects, but defensive purposes, this can be a great option. There's some I would definitely stay away from. So let's start on the outside here. This was a birthday gift probably, I don't know, eight years ago or something like that. Um, one, of, one of my good friends, he, uh, he's an older guy. And he wanted me to go bird hunting with him. And I didn't have a shotgun to, to go bird hunting. You know, I can't tell you the last time I went bird hunting uh, was. <laughs> Growing up, I always went squirrel hunting and deer hunting, not, not really bird hunting. But regardless, he gave me this. So this is a Charles Daly. It's a 12 gauge semi-auto shotgun. It's inexpensive and it works. And so, you know, nothing really wrong with that. Uh, but if you want to use this inside of a home, again, we're talking about defense. This thing is long. This is probably three quarters of a mile long. So trying to clear around doorways and do all this kind of stuff, it's a little unwieldy for something like that. Again, if we're talking about birds, fantastic, but we're not. A section of guns that I've had so much trouble with, and this is the second example from a different company, this is the Typhoon F12. I'm not ready to deem this thing a piece of junk yet, but man, I have not had good luck with these Turkish imports. This thing is freaking heavy and it looks cool. Yeah, but the most, the most reliable thing on this gun so far is the sight mark. 
And some of y'all hate these things, but sorry, it's been reliable. I don't know what to tell you. So far, anyways. It may be a piece of junk, but so far it's been pretty damn reliable. It's got this cool freaking rotary mag, 20 shots, but man, this thing is just so heavy and unwieldy. The biggest problem, I can't get the damn things to run reliably. Second Turkish shotgun, different company, cannot get them to run reliably. I've tried low brass, high brass, all that, lighter loads, heavier loads, I just can't get them to run. Don't recommend Turkish shotguns. You're gonna see them pretty much everywhere, or at least you have been, I have been. I don't recommend going with something like this. If you're gonna go with something, Mossberg, Benelli, those are more expensive, but Mossberg, Benelli, um, th those are really probably the best options. I've had really good luck with the Smith & Wesson m p 12. This is a fantastic home defense because it's a bullpup design. So again, overall, short length inside of your home. It is for defensive purposes. You can hold 14 shells of two and three quarter. I mean, this thing is pretty incredible. I've, I've seen some people saying they're having issues. I haven't had any issues yet, so it's been really great for me. But a bullpup is good for home defense. Uh, the KSG is another one that people swear by, but the Smith & Wesson bullpup, the, the M&P 12 has been great. Mossberg, again, Mossberg 500, 590A1, even the Maverick 88 is a good budget shotgun. But if you want to teach somebody how to shoot, you know, a shotgun can be a decent option. You can get really light 12 gauge bird shot, things like that. And you can go all the way up to slugs, but it's not my number one recommended option for an all around best first gun. So we have talked about a lot. I've told you some guns that I think are terrible first options. I've told you some that I think are good ones. So what do I think the best first gun for your first gun is. Because I did in this format, I don't think there's like any one single choice. I think if I, if I had to sum it up, starting from guns that I think are a good first option. Now I talked about some here that I don't think are good options. So I'm just going to exclude those from this list. But if we go with like the last best option, a good 308 rifle. If you want long range shooting and that's what you're into and that's what you know you want to do, personal defense, home defense, 308 inside your home. I don't know that I would do that, but uh, again, it, it it would could help save your life for sure. You can't carry it. And it's not a great home defense option. From there, one step above that, I'd say shotgun. Shotgun is, is a good option if you just want self-defense. It's probably the best option. But as far as a best first gun, it's it to me, it kind of limits you in what you can do. You can't carry it can't shoot a distance with it really. Uh, it just kind of, kind of, I don't know, for lack of better words, it just kind of gives you very limited options. Up from that, a PCC. So PCCs are good if you're only going to about 50 yards. And I'm talking about the effectiveness because they are still a pistol round, right? There's exceptions to this, but generally 50, 75 yards maybe is about all I would trust a PCC for, but you have the added benefit, personal protection, teaching somebody how to shoot, you yourself learning how to shoot. So it has a really, a lot of great features in a PCC, definitely not the best option, but I'd say it's right there kind of in the middle. Man, and then number one and two for best options. This really depends on you. I think that rifles, are second best. So I'm talking 556, 762 by 39. Your X95, I actually brought this out on the table to, to kind of show y'all to, to end the video. This is a fantastic, fantastic first gun. If you want to go with an AR platform, this is a fantastic first gun. And they offer you the benefit of home defense. You can stretch things out as well. You can stretch them out three, four, 500 yards, even past that. But the effectiveness, I would say four to 500 yards if we're talking about those two calibers, 7.62 by 39, 5.56. But man, you can do a lot with them and you can teach somebody how to shoot on them. And this is so much fun, dude, especially if you have a range that has steel targets already set out. And when you start hearing that, that, that steel ring at three, four, five, 600 yards, it's pretty addictive. Most importantly, being able to defend yourself, a rifle is great 
I just think pistols are the best first option. And the reason I say that, you can potentially carry that gun, you can learn how to shoot on that gun, you can learn your trigger control, you can use it for home defense, you can carry it in a car, which I didn't mention that, PCCs and rifles, you can as well, depending on your state laws, <laughs> very important. Um, but pistols just offer you all of that. So again, Equalizer is probably one of the, if not the best, first gun if you want to carry, man. I, I, I'm I deeming that thing that good because you can learn, you can teach on it, you can carry it. It is incredible. The Shield Plus is right there with it. Y'all pretty much know how I feel about it. If you've never seen any of my videos, the Shield Plus and the Equalizer, two of my absolute favorites. And I do have a comparison with those two coming. Um, if you want a Glock, Glock 43, you know, there you go. Uh, P365 is another good option if you want to carry full-size options. The Sig P320, the M&P M2.0, Glock 19, HK VP9, another good option. Full-size, to me, full-size or compact guns, handguns are probably the best way to start because they give you a full grip. They're a little bit heavier, a little bit easier to shoot, a little bit a little bit easier to learn on for sure. So I think those are the best guns for your first gun. And I really hope that this video is able to give you some direction now. So you kind of know how I feel about it and you obviously and ultimately have to make this decision for yourself, but that's where I stand on it, man. Any recommendations? Or if you want to see uh, maybe going into 2023, any more additions to this video or a different kind of format even? Make sure you leave those suggestions down below, dude. I'm always getting video ideas from y'all. So it's really good to hear from you. And uh, big thanks to you guys. If you want to support what I do, you can do that through Patreon for as little as $1 a month. $1 a month from a lot of people makes a huge difference. Big thanks to all of our channel members and patrons. See y'all in the next one. And as always, holding down.